Hi, Friendship West. The Be Made Whole Counseling Center announces reclaiming mental health for families. This exciting new grant will provide personal counseling, mentoring, classes, and I like to say layers of love to help connect with their power and purpose. If you live in the city of Dallas, have been impacted by COVID, that's all of us, and if you know you deserve a good job, you're ready to move on up, check us out. We've got laptops, hotspots, technology, books, and everything is online, so it's safe. If you want some power, some healing, and financial breakthrough, please join us. Applications are now available online. Please contact Ashanti Davis by email at adavis at friendshipwest.org, and she'll get you connected. Thanks. Hey, I'm Rashay Moore, ministry leader of Friendship West's media team. We are looking for talented individuals ages 16 and up to join our ministry as we glorify God one shot at a time. By joining the ministry, you will have the opportunity to learn how to work cameras, color correction, and how to operate the character generator. For you who don't know, that's the text on the screen. The media ministry helps to contribute to the vision of worship services. We strive for greatness and to serve our online worshipers with so much excellence that they feel like they are in the sanctuary with us. Are you ready to join a game changer ministry? Email me at rmore at friendshipwest.org. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together for another time of worship as we prepare for the new school year. We pray that all of us can go back to school relived, refocused, and revamped. Even though some of us have done some questionable things in the last school year, we know that you forgive us. We thank you for keeping us safe last school year, and we want to ask you to keep us safe this year. Pray over those who are going into college, getting ready to start a new life, and pray for those who are going to high school and being prepared for what's going to happen, and pray for those who are going into middle school, as we are the future generations. I pray for those small, innocent little children who are going to elementary. All these things and more, we just want to thank you for everything. Because we know, if not for you, we wouldn't be here. So thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hi, my name is Jaden Trusty, and I go to Pentigo Christian Academy. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for our strength, youth, our homes, families, and the gift of life. As we prepare to return to school for another academic year, I pray that you would provide a hedge of protection around all students, staff, teachers, administrators, coaches, and everyone who is committed to our education. I pray a special prayer for our student athletes, coaching staff, and all students in clubs, organizations, or on teams. Keep us all safe at school, on our way to games, during games, and on our way home from the games. Keep us from injury, sickness, or harm of any kind. When injuries occur, have us have a speedy recovery in advance. Thank you in advance. I pray for the discipline to balance school, athletics, schoolwork, our social life, and our faith life. I pray for the tenacity to put in the work that makes success possible. I pray for the W's and the win columns and A's on the report cards. Teach us to be gracious and victory and to learn lessons and defeat. As we run the race of life, help us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12, 1. For these and all other blessings, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. from Booker T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts. I will be a 
attended Hampton University in the fall to pursue a career in criminal justice. Thank you. <laughs> a career in criminal justice with a minor in business administration. As I stand up here and I think about how great God is, I can only think about one verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, that says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. As we think about today and we reflect on our back to school Sunday, I just want to give a prayer to the students that have started school, are about to start school, and the ones that hope to attend school in the near future. So please bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for allowing us to see a new day. Lord, thank you for just bringing us into your presence one more time, Lord. Thank you for just allowing us to be here, Lord, to breathe, to wake up, to praise your name one more time. Thank you for just every student in this room, Lord. I pray that we have successful school years, like Jaden said, to come home with report cards with A's on them, Lord, to allow students to understand that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to not get good grades sometimes, that they can make mistakes and do things better the next time, Lord. Thank you for everything you do, Lord. Thank you for just the people in our lives that we have as mentors, Lord, as the ones to raise us up, Lord. Sometimes when we feel like we have no one else to talk to, we can always come to you. When we have those days where we feel like it's too rough, too hard, Lord, we can always reflect and think about what can we do better to have another day, Lord. Thank you for the things that you're going to do, the things that you haven't done, and even the things that you're doing right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. to be anywhere else but they are in the house of the Lord so we want to show them love we want to support them y'all give it up for chosen how are you doing I'm doing great but I'm just scared that I'm going to fail my test today in class don't worry we got your back Always have faith. Yeah, don't worry. I just, I just need God to give me a blessing. Quick, quick, where you at? Cross the king and I the band. We got everything we need. Quit 
your testimony that I've got everything. Come on, everything, everything that I need. Come on, life and health and strength. Come on, I've got everything, everything, everything that I need. Hallelujah, hallelujah for an awesome God, an awesome God. Come on, who heals our diseases, who, who forgives our sin. We serve an awesome God. Come on, y'all, that gives us everything. Let the church say everything. Come on, say, I've got everything. Everything that I need. Come on and give God one more clap of praise here in this place. We give God a shout of praise for victory. You ought to just give God praise for the children. Oh, I can't hear nobody. I said you ought to just give God a praise for the ch Now, don't do that now. Come on now. Come on now, the drug dealers and the pushers and the, come on, and the gangbangers got a better welcome and a warmer reception than that. Come on, I just heard the Lord place a praise in the mouth of the children, and the whole church should have just went up. Why? Because the testimony is I got my school clothes, I've got shoes on my feet, I got a roof over my head, I've got everything. Saints, everything, hey, that I need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all gonna make me sweat out this African drip I got on. Hallelujah. But we got everything. Hallelujah. Everything that we need. Let me go ahead and grab this. Can someone grab that podium for me real quick? Amen. Praise God. I want to go ahead and be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is indeed the day that the Lord has made and what we have a duty and a responsibility. What? To rejoice. Let the church say rejoice. Oh, y'all not doing that. I said, let the church say rejoice and be glad. Thank you, Pastor White, and what the Lord is doing here today. We want to take a moment and celebrate as we uh, celebrate Back to School Sunday. We also want to celebrate the fact that this church continues to, it has in the past, and it continues to make a significant contribution to the lives of our young people. Amen. Amen. So this year, this year, your church, your church, your church, you did that, was able to give away $105,000. Y'all ain't impressed by nothing. I said $105,000 
to scholarship. Y'all gonna do that? Y'all gonna act like that this morning? I said $105,000 in scholarship so that children can get an education. Come on, so they, they can have knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And we give God thanks and praise. A special thanks, a special word though, of thanks to the families of Dr. the late Dr. Charles Mitchell for a significant contribution to the scholarship this year, as well as the family of Sister Barbara Record. We wanted to make sure, and, and that's right, that's appropriate, that's appropriate. A praise goes right there for the contributions that they have made to our scholarship. I'm just going to go ahead and invite our, our scholarship students just come on on stage and I'm going to call your name and you just start coming. You just start coming right now. And as they're coming, I want y'all to just start clapping. Alea Turner, Atia Garrett, Brendan Mason. Come on, Camille Dawson, they can't hear you. Chara Lewis, make sure y'all socially distance. Christopher Merrill. Come on, Kerrigan Smith-Jackson, Destiny Cromer, Dorian Ross, Haley Hall, Ireland Robinson. Jade Mitchell, I can't hear y'all. Jasmine Haynes and Jessica Bailey. Jessica Tassin, Kennedy Brown, Kinsley Nichols, Madison Watkins, Mahogany Walmsley. I still can't hear y'all. Mackenzie Durr, Micaiah Lydell, Newtanya Hemphill, Nicholas Durr, Patricia Callahan, Regina Heron, Savion Brown, Sunday Gibson. I still can't hear you. Sydney Fillmore, Tyranny Lewis, Thomas Haynes, Vasty Dorman, Zaria Kenner, Jemiah Turner, Kayla Nelson, Kennedy Freeman, Maya Parrish, Taylor Marshall, Taylor Nickerson. They're still coming. Come on, give God praise. I said give God praise. Trinity White, Amina Booker, Ariel Powell, Ashlyn Chu, Katie Ann Well, Ch uh, Chadarian Roseboro, uh, Kiana Vincent, Montgomery Morris, Quincy Stoker, Shaquayla Cyrus, Sydney Robinson, Zachary Blair, Kamani Philpots, and Amber Mitchell. Let the church. Oh, I, I, I can't hear y'all. Y'all, y'all ought not act like that. See, this is your legacy. These are your children. When they go to Hampton and when they go to UT and when, well, whenever they go where they go, they're representing you. You ought to just give God a praise. Come on, the Vanderbilt. You ought to just give God a praise for the seed that have been planted in the ground. Come on, extend your hand toward the pulpit. We're getting ready to pray for them. We don't just want to give them money. We're going to send them back with prayer because Satan is busy, but God is real. I can't hear nobody. I said the devil is busy trying to distract them, trying to make them quit, wanting to make them give up. But we serve a God who is realer and stronger than the devil. Come on, extend your hand and just begin to pray for him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, that this is our progeny, that this is indeed our legacy. We give you thanks and praise for what you're doing in our midst. It's a wonderful thing. It, this is the Lord's doing. Lord, it was our contributions, but it was the Lord's doing, and, and it is marvelous in our sight. And so, Lord, we say thank you, and we ask, O oh God, that wherever their foot shall trod, that it will be a place of victory. We ask right now that you would bless them in their going out and in their coming in, Lord. Lord, we ask right now that you would make them the head and not the tail. Lord, that you would make them lenders and not borrowers. Father, we thank you for a future that, Lord, we see them in the future and they look better and brighter and stronger than they even look right now. And so we put the devil on notice that you can't have our children, that, that you can't have have our young people, but but that they are redeemed and bought with a price. And because they belong to the Lord, we send them out with Holy Ghost blessing. Because they belong to the Lord, we decree and declare that they shall have victory in everything that they touch. And the people of God put their hands together and said, Amen, if you believe it to be so. Oh, don't fool me now. Oh, come on and give God praise for your young people. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. They just needed to see you. They just needed to see you. Trinity, don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. They just need to see you. Haley, where's Haley? Where's Haley? Oh, there. God bless you. You stay right there. Where's Camille? Yup, yeah, mm-hmm, yup, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Y'all stand right there. Y'all stand right there. Come on, one more time for all of our, yeah, all of our scholarship recipients. But I want to take a moment to acknowledge the three young ladies that are behind me. Amen. 
because uh, y'all know that we've only been back in worship, full-time worship for what? Um, we've only been back. God bless you, Amber. God bless you. Shout out to Howard. Come on, give God praise for Howard. Okay, Hampton. We give God thanks and praise. But I want to acknowledge these three who are here. We've only been back four months. Amen. Is that, do y'all realize that? I know it feels like four years, but, 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 but it's only been four months. And so in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the most difficult season in the life of this church, right, when it felt like everyone else had abandoned the youth ministry, I want to give God thanks and praise for Camille and for Trinity and for Haley because they remain committed and they remain faithful. And all that you saw today was a consequence of the fruit and the labor that they poured in. Now, we have had students who have been a tremendous blessing to this ministry. Matter of fact, let all my SWAT students. I want all of SWAT to stand and we give God thanks and praise for them. But what you saw today was a consequence of the fruit of their labor, their hard emotional and spiritual labor as they helped us to craft our calendar for 2021. And as they, amen, they are going off to school. Now, this is why they're special. This is why they're special. They're special because when I came in as the youth pastor, they were just getting ready to go to high school, right? So uh, Camille's gradual, eighth grade graduation was the first graduation. I attended as a youth pastor. And here they are. I'm running uh, for re-election for the people's love, and they're getting ready to go off to school. Amen. So we give God thanks and praise for four years that have flown by, but I pray that God blesses each and every one of you in your going out and coming in. I just, uh, we just wanted to make sure that we signal to you how much of a blessing you have been to us. We wanted to just leave you with a gift as a, as a sign of our deep appreciation for all that you've done. Come on, give God thanks and praise for them. Oh, y'all ought to do better than that. And we got to send a special word for Haley, who is our Frederick Douglass Scholar. She got the highest score on our scholarship. So she's headed to Vanderbilt University with the most money. Don't play a hate celebrate for what God is doing. Thank y'all so much, and God bless you. 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 Now, we're going to prepare ourselves for the praise dance ministry. Put your hands together for them as they come. give y'all a few announcements. That sound right, Lottie Dottie and everybody. Amen. Back there trying to figure it out. Amen. I'm going to give y'all just a few announcements. Next Sunday, join us next Sunday. Somebody say next Sunday. Next Sunday is super special. Next Sunday is really special because next Sunday is somebody say superhero Sunday. 
Yeah, y'all didn't get excited like I thought you would. Y'all didn't get excited. So we're asking you to join us for church in your family. I'm going to make the same announcement again at the end, but just go with me. Join us for church in your favorite superhero costume or t-shirt. Amen. Here in worship, come as your favorite superhero or in your favorite superhero t-shirt as we celebrate a risen Savior. Amen. See, okay, that's cool. That, so for those of you who still got some life and some joy in you, amen, make sure that you come with your favorite superhero t-shirt and in your favorite superhero costume. Our minister for that morning is going to be the Reverend Tamisha Mills, amen, from the Greater Allen Cathedral, amen, AME Church in the city of New York, where Reverend Dr. Elaine Flake is the pastor. If you know me, you know I love me some Elaine Flake. And so Reverend Tamisha is a daughter of the house. She's going to be in the house for us on that uh, on next Sunday the 21st and then after worship after worship when you get finished shaking hands and doing what you do I want you to join us join us next week as we get ready to pray well God is doing something amazing here God is doing something awesome in this place you ought to just say amen right there and so as we are preparing for what is next amen it's superhero Sunday we're looking toward the future we're looking toward what God wants to do in this house and in this place and so next Sunday Sunday, the 21st following worship service. We're going to go pray over the land next door, amen, as we plan for the development of things for our youth and our children, our entertainment center, and all of the things that our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglas Haynes, the vision that he has cast and prepared for us. So I want you to get to put your marching shoes on, get your walking shoes when you get your costume on. Some of y'all going to come in full regalia. I can already tell. I already know the people who are going to come with their mask on. Security going to be checking. Amen, amen. But but when you you make sure you have your walking shoes on because when we finish with that benediction, we're going across the right across the way, right across the way, and we're gonna give God thanks and praise for what He's about to do next. Let the church shout next. I said, let the church shout next. There ought to be a better praise in here for what God is about to do next. Amen. Amen. We're ready. We're ready to go. Oh, come on. Come on, praise team. Y'all got the helmet. My praise answers. Y'all got to take us to another level, all right? Can y'all take us to another level in the Lord so we can go ahead and, and celebrate the Lord on this day? Come on, give them a hand as they come, y'all. Come on, celebrate them as they come. Shakers, you're raising up 
bless you. All right, and the house was filled with smoke. Amen. Amen. We give God thanks and praise. Come on, one more time for all of our young people who have just been amazing. Come on, from start to finish. Come on, they have all just been amazing. Just off the chain. I'm pr Look, I'm proud to be your youth pastor. Y'all just make me proud to be your youth pastor. Y'all have just showed out, and y'all going to keep showing out all month long. We got, look, we doing this for a whole month, not a weekend. Amen. Hallelujah. We are overworking ourselves and taxing ourselves. Amen. But we give God thanks and praise for our young people, for all of our youth ministry leaders. I'm going to make sure uh, that I take another point of pastoral privilege at the end so that we acknowledge them again for their tremendous work, their tremendous work. Uh, with our young people. Let's go to God in prayer as we prepare for the word. They just got, they got me hot. I'm sweating out this African Versace. Amen. Come on, let's go. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Lord, for this day, for this privilege that you give us to preach. We thank you, O oh God, for the privilege that we have to come to the house of prayer one more time. Lord, you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to allow us to gather here. You didn't have to give us life. You didn't have to give us health and strength. It could have been another way. But Lord, we love you and we thank you that you got a word here for us, that, that you want to speak to us. And so we say, speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. If you don't speak, Lord, we won't know what to do. And so we need you to come by here and give us a word that would save someone, a word that would heal someone, a word that would deliver someone. A word that would answer some question and confirm something. Lord, we need a word for our young people who are going back to school, going back to college, trying to decide what to do with their life. Lord, they need to hear from you. A word of life, a word of affirmation. Speak a word, oh God, that comes against suicide. A word that stands against anxiety and depression. Send a word, oh God, that will strengthen them to stand against peer pressure. Lord, send a word that strengthens them in their spirit so that they can run on and see what the end is going to be. Lord, we ask for an anointing today. Lord, that makes preaching easy. Lord, I ask that you would come by here, that you would settle in our midst, oh God, so that when we leave this place, we can testify that surely we have been in the presence of the Lord. We say thank you. We say thank you today. That's the best that we have is thank you for life and for health and for strength and for this moment and for this second. Lord, we give you praise and honor and glory. And the people of God said, amen. Come on, say amen again. Amen, amen. As, I, as the um, young people were, were ministering, um, and, and I was thinking about back to school Sunday, uh, my mind immediately went to uh, when I was a child um, and the fact that my mother, uh, and as, as, as they were dancing, it just came to me. I thought about how my mother would uh, take us Every day, every day, until I got old enough to drive myself to school to five o'clock prayer at Mason Temple Institutional Church of God in Christ, 640 Washington Boulevard in Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah, five in the morning. I'm talking about they was travailing in the Holy Ghost at five in the morning. The only saving grace is that they would let us go to sleep on the back pew. Amen. They did let us go to sleep on the back pew and we would be sleeping. They would just be in there praying. They would be in there laying hand. They'd come by and we'd be sleeping every now and then. they just anoint us with oil and just keep, I'm talking about travailing in the Holy Ghost. And you know, I didn't understand it then, but I have just a little bit better understanding now of what God was up to. But I, I just thought about it. I just, I could hear Mother Patricia Steele well. My soul loves Jesus my I don't have my voice my soul I need you to help me love Jesus come on my soul love Jesus bless his name Help me, my soul loves Jesus, my 
Come on, help me. My soul loves Jesus. Hey, bless. Oh, bless his name. He's a wonder in my soul. Come on, help me. He, he's a wonder in my soul. Soul, I need your help. He's a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. He's a wonder in my soul. He, he's a wonder. In my, in my soul, he, he's a wonder in my soul, bless, oh bless his name, I do, come on help me, the old, come on saints, I need thee. It's a congregational song, yeah. Ria. Come on, I need thee. Oh, bless. Oh, bless me now. Me now, my sin. That's it, come on. I come to to the heel wonder in my soul. He, he's a wonder in my, in my soul. Hey, he, he's a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. Come on, help me. He's a wonder. Ah, yeah. In my soul. He, he's a wonder. Laid up in a hospital bed in my soul. He, he's a wonder. In my soul.
Yeah, I'll trust you and obey when your spirit takes. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer, and my answer will be. in my spirit. Somebody still needs to tell the Lord yes. You keep asking God why because you just won't say yes. Say yes. It's yes to your will. We give God thanks and praise. We honor the spirit of Christ. Be seated if you can. For it is in him that we live and move and have our being. Come on, we honor the angel of this house. Come on, can you help me celebrate? Come on, the angel of this house. Come on, our, our senior pastor. Come on, he's on vacation, but don't take your praise on vacation. Come on. Come on, we give God thanks and praise for a visionary leader, for a warrior, for justice and truth and righteousness. And we thank God for the life and ministry of Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglas Haynes III. And we send him our choicest blessings and prayers this morning. We pray that he will return refreshed and restore for the work that is indeed ahead of us. Let the church say... Amen. Amen. We give God thanks and praise for First Lady. We pray for First Lady and for Albany and for Mother Oliver. Amen. We pray that God's choices, blessings would continue. Amen. To rest upon them as well. To all of you, God's children, Lottie, Dottie, and everybody, I was just glad. Yeah, when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I've only got 18 minutes left, so... Let's go to the Word of God on this Back to School Sunday as we celebrate, amen, what God is doing in the life of our young people. I want to go back to the book of Mark, Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. Amen. And we're still in the Gospel of Mark as a church as we continue to uh, endeavor to gather ourselves in terms of our spiritual development through the Gospel. So I want to turn your attention to the first chapter. It's a, we, we've been in this text several times this year, but... One more time, it's not going to hurt, amen. So we pray for fresh revelation today. Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 1 and ending at verse 11. So it is a long passage of scripture, but I, I ask that you would bear with me. And then I want to focus our attention primarily on verses 9 through 11, all right? So we're going to read beginning at verse 1 through verse 11, but I want to center our, our focus today sermonically on verses 9 through 11. And it reads like this from the New International Version. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare ye the way for the Lord and make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. And John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes one more powerful than I. The straps of whose sandals, she says, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and even untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. 
At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, verse 9 says, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And the voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son. You are my daughter. You are my child whom I love. And with you, I am well pleased. For the time that is ours together, beloved, I want to preach from this text, this thought, I need to know. Yeah, I, I need, I need to know. I need to know. I need to know. Now, for the record, for those of you who are already asking, no, this is not a reference to a Doja Cat song. No, 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 it's not that. That's not, that's not where we're going this morning. But I do want to begin with a simple premise that every stage of human development is marked by a knowing. That every stage and level of human development is marked by a knowing. By kindergarten, you should know your ABCs, your colors, left from right, even though I still struggle, amen, and even how to tie your shoes, amen, you should know that. And then, and then by the time, but before that, when they get to preschool, they should know how to ask to use the bathroom, <laughs> okay? They should know, they should know. By the fifth grade, you should know your times tables. You should know your times tables, and you should know, amen, Sister Sharp, how to do some long division, amen? You should know that. You should know that. And you might even be able to do a little bit of basic algebra. You should know, maybe know that. By the ninth grade, you should know how to write a basic research paper. Amen. Hallelujah. And by the twelfth grade, the assumption is that you know at least enough about basic mathematic concepts and that you know enough about English syntax and sentence structure that you can go on to succeed in college and in life because every stage of human development is marked by a knowing. And so that's why the writer of Proverbs says in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, that wisdom is the principal thing, not money, not claws, not clothes, not status, not fame, not a thousand or a hundred thousand or a million followers on Instagram or on TikTok. No, wisdom, the writer of Proverbs said, is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, he says, and with all of your getting, make sure that what you get most of all is and understanding. And so, yes, life is about the acquisition of knowledge about the world and the way things are. And spiritually, even, we gather together as a family week by week to search the scriptures together because we are in search of deeper knowledge about how to navigate this thing called life. And somebody is brave enough to testify that at 30 and that at 40, at 50, dang, at 60, maybe even 70 years old, we are still learning some things about life, learning about ourselves, and discovering new knowledge about the world that we live in because every stage of human development, child of God, is marked by a knowing. Let the church shout knowing. The French psychoanalyst Jacques Lacan had this in mind when he proposed what he called the theory of the mirror stage of child development. Yeah, the mirror stage of child Child development. In a reinterpretation of Freud, Lacan argued that children pass through a stage of development between six and 18 months old where they first begin to discover themselves in the mirror. It, it, it's what Freud called an initial narcissism. They begin to identify themselves in mirrors, and so they'll attempt to touch the mirror. They'll attempt to put their hands in water where they see their reflection. It's called the mirror stage where they first begin 
to identify themselves in mirrors. And for Lacan, this mirror stage is important because it is the stage of development in children where Lacan says that they begin to develop, number one, a sense of self-identity, and then number two, the capacity for self-mastery. Stay with me. Lacan says that the child experiences self-identity by learning to differentiate itself from its mother psychologically and physically. And it is this physiological and psychological differentiation that lends itself to an eventual self-mastery. So the baby is touching the mirror and putting their finger and hands in the water because they're attempting to and anticipating a day where they won't be, where they will indeed be in complete right charge of their motor functions, where their hair won't bobble back and forth, where they'll be able to walk upright and not need you, right? And so the mirror stage is important according to Lacan because that, that the infant in that stage identifies with the mirror and if they don't, something bad happens. It's crucial because without that identification, then the child, according to Lacan, grows into a human being, watch this, who is unable to perceive itself as a whole human being and will therefore not be able to establish an ideal ego. And that's why I entitled the message, I Need to Know. I, I Need to Know because knowledge is essential to the establishment and the construction of a healthy and independent identity. And because all of us are in process of learning how to know, in the process of learning, uh, we are all there. And because everyone is there, because everyone is trying to discover something new about themselves and the world, that's really all of our declaration today that I need to know. And I know that that's kind of heavy for a Sunday morning, but, but I couldn't help but think about the mirror stage. Y'all forgive me. When I read Mark's gospel and the first chapter, I couldn't help but think about it. Why? Because Mark literally sets us down in the infancy of Jesus's ministry. Check that out. Mark's gospel, y'all, contains no birth narrative. There, there is no infancy narrative in Mark as there is in Matthew and in Luke and in John. There are no angels who come to poor shepherds in fields. There is no baby who is laid in a manger. Now, Mark cuts through all of that and gets right to the chase and drops us down in the infancy of the ministry of Jesus, a 30-year-old man, watch this, who has not performed one miracle, who has not healed one body, who has not preached one sermon. This is the beginning stage, the infancy of Jesus's ministry. And we might think of it another way, that this is the day before the first day of life school for Jesus. Yeah. And I think that that's fair to say because verse 12 of chapter 1 of Mark's gospel says that the next day he went into the wilderness and was tested. Yeah. And it's fair to say that Mark drops us down in what is the infancy of Jesus's ministry, what is the very beginning of his work on this earth. This is the first day of life school for Jesus, what Mark calls the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Messiah and the Son of God. Check that out. Mark is clear, y'all. Come here. That this is the Messiah, that this is the Son of God, that this is God in flesh, that this is God come to earth, that this is Emmanuel and God with us. And watch this. There are still, though, some things that apparently Jesus don't know. No, let me say it another way. There are things apparently still that Jesus needs to know. Yeah, there's some things that Jesus needs to know, some knowledge that he still needs to acquire, some understanding that he's got to pull down, some wisdom that he's got to produce. And what I like about Jesus is that he seeks help to answer the questions that he needs answers to. Yeah, the Bible says that he had a big cousin by the name of John who was baptizing in Jordan and preaching a baptism of forgiveness and a message of repentance. He was preaching about the Savior and the Messiah who was to come. And John, I like what I like about John is that John was not afraid to be different. I mean, the dude was a complete weirdo. He wore strange clothes and he ate strange food and he lived in the wilderness and he preached a weird message. The dude was way out there, but, but he was a student of the prophet Isaiah. And so he preached what the prophet preached. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And John says that there's one coming behind me whose shoes I'm unworthy to untie. And he's got a greater message and he's got more power and his anointing supersedes my own. And even though all of that was true, Jesus still came to John to receive 
receive wisdom and knowledge and understanding concerning baptism and forgiveness and repentance. And I think it's appropriate to pause to preach right here so that I can tell some young person it's okay to not know everything. It's okay to still have to ask questions of mom and dad. It's okay to recognize that there are indeed some things that Google won't teach you, that Instagram can't show you, that TikTok cannot train you to do. It is okay to still need the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding of the adults in your life. It is okay that you don't know it all. And I know, I know you think that you know everything. I know that you think that everything that your mama say is cap. I, I know that you think your daddy and your granny don't know what they talking about. I know you think that they just got old by happenstance. I know you don't believe that the gray hair that is on their hair, you think it's just there for show. You don't think that it's a sign that, that they might have just a little bit of wisdom. I ain't saying there ain't no old fools. I'm just saying every now and then you ought to yield the benefit of the doubt. It's okay, child of God, not to know, especially when God has put people around you who care enough to tell you what you don't know. Oh, but come here, parents, come here, because in the inverse, watch this, watch them get quiet, because in the inverse, mom and dad, in the inverse, auntie and granny, there's some things that they need to know, and you can't shield them from it, you can't expect that they're going to be insulated from it, you can't expect that you're going to be able to protect them from everything, no, 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 there are some things that they absolutely need to know, some things about life and its brutality, and its ugliness, and its grotesque formations that are essential to their their survival and if you refuse to tell them the truth as childishness and innocence fades if you pretend that it's not real if you act like it won't happen to them if you act like they'll never experience with drug experiment with drugs if you act like they ain't never gonna taste alcohol if you act like they ain't gonna never experiment with their sexuality if you act like they ain't looking at pornography if you act like they ain't gonna get into a toxic relationship you're setting them up for failure because they're there are just some things that they need to know about life and the only way they're going to know it, it ain't going to come from TV. It's going to be distorted if they get it from YouTube. It's going to be jacked up if they get it from their friends. It's going to smell like weed if they get it from their cousin. And so they need to know. 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 There are just some things. There are just some things that they need to know because every stage of human development is marked by a knowing. And I think that there are some conversations that are indeed best left between parents and ch I am that youth pastor. There are some things that your mama need to talk to you about. I will pray for you for it, but I, that's not my responsibility. You go, and they call my office and they ask and they say, "What? what, 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 what how old are you? Does your mama know? Okay, go back and what, pray about it pray with you, but you need to go to talk to her because there are just some things that they will only be able to receive and that it is your duty and responsibility to give them so that they would not be ignorant of the world that they live in. They need to know. But if y'all going to have success this year, I'm going to give you four things. I, I think there are at least four things that you do need to know that I can tell you that, 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 that I think your mama and your daddy won't have a problem with me telling you. Here's the first thing that you need to know. If you're going to be successful, I need to know who I am. You need to know who you are. You, 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 you need to know who you are. Remember, although the mirror stage is about the establishment of the self, that sense of self is still heavily dependent on the other. And it's not just any other, but it is specifically the parental other. And so how the parent responds to the child in the mirror stage of development fundamentally imprints the child's sense of self and their sense of who they are. So even when children are very little, you got to be careful of what you say to them, what you speak over them, what you say and do around them and do to them because it imprints their sense of who they are. And so verse 9 of chapter 1 says, at the time Jesus came from Nazareth and Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the sky open up and the spirit descended on him like a dove and a voice came from heaven which said, you 
are my son whom I love and in whom I am well pleased. Come here, y'all, because most of us might assume that all along Jesus had been developing and constructing a firm foundation of self-identity. What did Pastor Dare, what did my brother come and preach here last week? That Jesus at 12 years old was in the temple studying with scribes and elders. What did, what did my brother Pastor Dare come and say? That his mother and father spent days looking for him and when his mama found him and was getting ready to chastise him, what did he respond with? He responded with a critical question. Woman, don't you know that I've got to be about my father's business? Now that's a strong sense of self. That's a strong personal identity and some of us know young people who are 12 and 13. I'm blown away by 12 and 13 and 14 and 15 and 16 and 17 year old young people who have a strong sense of who they are but remember now that even Jesus with his strong sense of identity was still vulnerable watch this to low self esteem what did he say in Matthew chapter 16 when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples I'm the son of God I am the Messiah I'm God in the flesh I'm Emmanuel I am God with us but who do people say that I am? And they reply, some say you're John, and some say you're Elijah, and some say you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets, but that wasn't enough. It, it, that didn't satisfy. So he said, well, you close to me. You know me. You eat at my table. We cool. We kick it. You, 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 know, you know what I'm saying? You done slept on my stone, right? Yeah, we, we done been camping together. We done been fishing together. Who do you say? Yeah, yeah. Who do you say? Yeah, that I am. This is a moment of humanness on the part of Jesus. Here is the Son of God fishing for compliments. Here is the Son of God needing to be affirmed. And yet he needs to know, even though he's the Son of God, that people see him and that they know who he is. And I think that the text is tailored to teach us that you will spend the rest of your life, child of God, constructing your identity. Who you are at 14 ain't who you're going to be at 34. And prayerfully, who you are at 44 ain't who you were at 24 and you will spend the rest of your life coming into greater acquaintance with who you are learning yourself learning your values discovering your likes and dislikes coming into greater acquaintance with your own temperament discovering your tolerance for bull you you will spend the rest of your life constructing your identity and child of God let me admonish you that you've got to remain diligent in constructing your identity because if you're not diligent in constructing your identity you will conform your identity come in it's easy to want to be one of the cool kids it's easy to dumb yourself down to fit in to dress provocatively to get attention to do things that are out of your character to impress people who won't share your proximity in 10 years it is easy to downplay your big gifts so you can get close to small people but come here let me tell you something that's why what Paul said at the, to the church of Rome, be not conformed to this world. It's trashy. It's nasty. It's ugly. It ain't got nothing for, be not conformed to this world, but what? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I want to tell you to hold on to your R. To hold on to who you are. Somebody ought to just shout that, hold on to who you are. Come on, say it again. Hold on to who you are. Don't, life let you, don't let life try to snatch it. Don't let life try to grab it. Don't let haters take it from you, but hold on to who you are. Think of life as your dream house. You can fix it up any way that you want to. You can make it look just like the neighbor's house, or you can make it the most individualized house on the block. That's your choice. But the worst thing that you could do is sell it out and lose your sin of who you are. For what does it profit a man to, come on, talk to me, to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Child of God, first of all, you got to know who you are. Come on. I, I need to know who I am. Here's the next thing. Uh, I, I need to know. I need to know who I am. I'm trying to rush. I'm trying to get out of here. I need to know next where I come from. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. That's yeah, that's important. I need to know. I need to know where I come from. I come from. Yeah, that's why the old songs, ain't nothing wrong with the old songs. I love Kirk Franklin. 
But every now and then, right, I think about my mother in the living room when life wasn't, wasn't good and you know, I just hear a mo humming and moaning and right, 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 that I love the Lord, he heard my cry and what? And pitied every groan, long as I live and trouble rise, I'll hasten to his throne. You gotta know where you come from. The scripture says that in order to get to John, that Jesus came in verse nine, from Nazareth in Galilee. For those of you in the Zoom Zoom room who are taking notes, verse 9 says that he came from Nazareth in Galilee. Now, that's not inconsequential to Mark's gospel. I'm certain that Mark knew of the reputation of Nazareth and Galilee, and I think that's why he put it there. It's to let us know where Jesus came from, because not everybody thought very highly of Nazareth. Come in, in, in John 1, 46, Philip and Nathaniel had their first encounter with Jesus, and, and, and when they learn uh, uh, that Jesus is from Nazareth, uh, Nathaniel asked a question, can anything good, uh, can, can, can anything of value, can, can, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I mean, Na Nazareth was that bad. That, that's like asking, can anything good come out of, uh, out of South Dallas? Ain't that what Brother Isaiah asked us yesterday? Can anything good come out of Bonton? Can, can anything good come out of Cockrell Hill? Can, can anything good come out of Pleasant Grove? Can, can, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But, but Nathaniel was focused on the wrong thing. Nathaniel was worried about where he came from, and he didn't understand who he came from. Come here and see why Mark don't give us an end infancy narrative, the gospel of Mark takes the time to give us a genealogy so that Mark could know and Nathaniel could know that Jesus came from Nazareth, but he's descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He, he's the descendant of Judah and Jesse. He's the son of Ruth and Obed. He, he descended from Rahab and David. And for every name, there is a narrative that Jesus himself is connected to. And so child of of God, I just come to tell you to refuse to be limited by your zip code because you know the strength of your genetic code. Come here. Because in your genetic code is strength and power beyond your wildest imagination. And if you limit yourself to your neighborhood, you'll never connect with and know the narratives that are written in blood that are on standby for you as a source of power. Come here. You need to know who you are and you need to know where you came from. You need to know your history. History. You need to know that your people were enslaved, but that they weren't slaves. You need to know that before West Africans came to North America, they had built empires and populated the globe. You need to know that we are descended from a people who at every instance, the things of civilization have tried to destroy. And just like the Bible says, the more they oppressed us, the more we multiplied. The more they tried to stop us, the more we spread. And so the people of God came to be a thorn in the side of the oppressor and you need to know that it was your people who gave the world jazz that it was your people who gave the world blues and funk and soul and rhythm and comedic timing and soul food and blue notes and the black church Frankie Beverly and Mays James Brown and Aretha Franklin Whitney Houston Jay-Z and Beyonce come on talk to me D'Angelo Lauren Hill and the roots. You need to know that it was black folk, y'all, who gave the world hip-hop, who gave the world the nonviolent philosophy of Martin Luther King, the rebellious politics of Malcolm X, the economic blueprint of Marcus Garvey and Booker T. Washington, the pristine discipline of the nation of Islam, the sociological theory of W.B. Du Bois, the political patience of Nelson Mandela, the walking integrity of Benjamin Elijah Mays, the grace and poise of Michelle Obama, the courage of Harriet Tubman and the prophetic witness of Frederick Douglass. You need to know who you are. You need to know where you came from because if it wasn't important, the state of Texas wouldn't have spent billions of dollars trying to prevent you from learning who you are. 
Y'all ought to talk black to me in here. I said, if it, if it wasn't important, they wouldn't spend all their time trying to keep you from learning about who you are. And child of God, watch this. When you know who you are and when you know where you came from, watch this. You realize that there was someone who paved a way for you. Come here, because I'm still in the text. For the Bible says that John had been in the wilderness preaching a baptism of forgiveness and repentance. And he came as one with a voice crying in the wilderness is saying what? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. That was his mission and that was his message to prepare the way so that somebody else could come. And I stopped by to tell some young person that just like John, there was somebody who prepared a way for you. Somebody who died so that you could have a public education. Somebody who marched so you could have access to a public library. Somebody who had to sweat and bleed so that you could go to the mall and shop where you want to shop. Somebody who had to endure humiliation so that you could live in a nice house and drive a nice car. And so when you know who you are and where you came from, you know that somebody paved the way for you. And when you know that somebody made a way for you, you go in the classroom and you act different. You don't fall into foolishness because at the forefront of your mind is the sacrifice that somebody else made. All oh, talk to me here. You need to know who you are and where you come from because somebody paved the way for you. It ain't always been like this. You ain't always had access to nice things. You couldn't always go to a public university. You couldn't always sit in the front of the class. You couldn't always walk down the street and not hear racial slurs and see when you know who you are and where you come from and when you realize that someone paved the way, you walk different. You'll talk different. You'll carry yourself with a sense of dignity and pride because you know that your life is not yours but that it has been given to you so that you can do what somebody else did for you and prepare the way for somebody coming behind you. Yeah. If it hadn't been for a praying grandmother, if it hadn't been for a travailing mother, if it hadn't been for a father who pushed education, if it hadn't been for an auntie who demanded excellence, if it hadn't been for the struggle of some slave whose name you didn't know but for whom you are an answered prayer, if it had not been for the Lord on their side. Okay, all right, all right. Let, let me get out your way. Okay, here, here, here. Here's the next thing you need to know. You need to know who you are. Uh, I, I need to know who I am. Um, I need to know where I come from, right? Oh, I need to know that God is with me. Yeah, yeah, we, we need to know that God is with you. It's going to get tight right here. Y'all stay with me. The text says that Jesus came to John, who was baptizing in Jordan. Verse 10 says, just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn right, and a voice came from heaven saying, you're my son, whom I love and with whom I'm well pleased. Jesus receives confirmation of his identity directly from heaven. But it's not simply that God is wanting Jesus to know who he is. He also wants Jesus to know that he's with him. Come here, y'all. And that's important because as soon as we get to verse 12, right, it says that Jesus goes into the wilderness and is, and is tempted. And throughout the rest of the gospel of Mark and the rest of the gospel narrative, we see Jesus struggling and dealing with demons, having to teach hard-headed disciples, having to deal with difficult Pharisees and Sadducees, with religious leaders and elites, and with, with a, 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 an oppressive political order. And it is really enough to make him quit if he didn't know that God was with him. Come here, y'all. And I'm talking to some young person who's looking at the school year, and you're looking at what's in front of you. You're looking at the star test, and you're overwhelmed. You're thinking about the fact that you want to go to college, and you want your application to stand out. And so you want to get a good grade on an SAT, and an SAT, even though it's not required. You want your application to stand out. Somebody else is making a decision to go into the military, and you're wrestling with the fact that in order to serve the country, you've got to face the fact that even though the country still remains unrepentant for the sin 
sin of racism at any moment. Your black self could be called upon to give your life for the few freedoms that we still enjoy. Somebody else is trying to decide whether or not you're going to go back to school or whether you're going to get a job and you're frozen in fear because you don't know what's next. But I stop by to tell you, child of God, you don't have to worry if you just remember that God is with you wherever you go, from Harvard to Howard to Hampton or Hanoi, from Baylor to Brown or Beijing, the University of Texas or the University of Hard Knocks, child of God, God is with you in every trial and every test. God is with you in every exam and in every quiz. God is with you in every performance evaluation or with every pink slip. God is with you. Unemployed, he's with you. Unmarried, he's with you. Uninterested, he's with you. Unmotivated, he's with you. Underpaid, he's with you. Overworked, he's with you. Can I go further? In the club, he's with you. In a jail cell, he's with you. In a hospital bed, he's with you. In places where you ain't got no business with people who don't mean you no good, God is with you. And if God goes with you, if God is beside you, if God be for you, who can be against you? But come in. Because y'all shot, but come in. Come in. Come in. God is with you. But the question is, are you with him? All right. When I was in, when I was in the U choir, we used to sing a song, Where Do You Stand? <laughs> Who's on the Lord's side? <laughs> Somebody would say, I'm on the Lord's side. Do, 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 right. Yeah, that, and that's really what Jesus was deciding to do when he came to be baptized by John in the Jordan. That's really what the others were doing when they came to hear him preach of forgiveness and repentance. They were, a make, they were making a choice, y'all, to choose God. And I want to know, I want to know, I want you to know that in every instance in your life, he's with you in the club. The eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth. He is omnipresent. The psalmist said it this way, if I make my bed in hell, behold you there. If I take the wings of the morning and ascend into heaven, doggone, God is there too. So child of God, everywhere you go, God is with you, but that don't mean that you're with him. Come here. And John was baptizing, uh, preaching a gospel of repentance and forgiveness of sin. And I know it's about to get quiet in here because we don't preach about sin no more. I, I know, I know preaching about sin has gone out of style, but I just want you to know, I don't want to preach about sin. I want to preach about forgiveness. Come here. And God has forgiven forgiveness for you, child of God. I don't know if you know it, but God will forgive you. I, I, okay, y'all don't like it. I'll preach to myself. That's all right. God will forgive you for all the weed that you smoked behind your mama's back. God will forgive you for all the underage drinking that you did this summer. God will forgive you for everybody that you caught this summer. God will forgive you for sneaking people in and out your mama's house. God will forgive you for sneaking out after curfew. You. God will forgive you for every ounce of lean, for every gram of dro, for every pill and bean that you've ever popped. God has grace for the times that you started to see spaceships on Bankhead. She might not forgive you, but God will forgive you for how you disrespected your parents and your elders. Come here, y'all. There is no sin that God does not have grace for. There is grace after failure. There is grace after divorce. There is grace grace after abortion. There is grace after adultery. God will give you grace for your porn addiction. God has grace for the fact that you know every little Dirk song, but won't open and read your Bible. Child of God, there is grace for that. God will give grace to liars and to cheaters and to backbiters. There's grace after sin and shame. God has grace, but you can't access grace if you won't repent. You got to tell God, Lord, I'm sorry. You you gotta say like David said, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Blot out my transgressions and remove my iniquity. Don't cast me away from your presence and don't you dare take your Holy Spirit from me. No, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Yeah, God is with you, but are you with him? All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 God is with you, but you got to decide if you're going to be with him. It's your choice. 
You don't have to choose him. Hey, I'm, look, God is like, look, you can either love me or don't. That's your, that's your business. But, 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 but God is with you. You just got to make a decision if you're going to be with him. All right. All right. Here it is. Let me leave y'all alone. Here's the last one. You, you need to know. I need to know who I am. I need to know where I come from. I need to know that God is with me. Last point. I'm done, leaving y'all alone. Gonna go home, eat some chicken, take a nap. God bless you. Here's the last point. You need to know that you're loved. Yeah. 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 And I know that's simple, I know that's not deep, but there is a depth of profundity to just that simple word. That's really the word of grace that somebody needs to hear today. That no matter where you are, that no matter how you are, that no matter what you've done, no matter who you did it with, God still loves you. See, 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 there should have been a better praise than that. Because, see, we don't love everybody. We, we, pretend like we, we pretend like we do, right? But, but we, ain't really, we don't really love everybody. Look, you, you can break God's heart a thousand times. God still loves you. Okay. But more than that, I believe that it is the love of God that inspires Jesus to know that he could be faithful to his calling even to the cross. He could do that because he knew that he was loved. And maybe there are two or three witnesses who can testify that I am who I am, and it's not because of the degrees on my wall. Can I testify? I am who I am, and it's not because of Morehouse, Princeton Seminary, or the University of Cambridge. It's not because of where I work. It ain't because of where I went to school. It's not because of what I drive. It's not because of who I know or where I've been, but I am who I am because somebody loved me. And I came to testify with Patty LaBelle and Ply. Somebody loves you, child of God. You didn't know it, but I just came to bless that I just want to drop that on you. Somebody loves you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, somebody loves you. That's the testimony of the scripture according to verse 11. And verse 10 says, just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And verse 11 says, a voice came from heaven and said these words, you are my son whom I love. With you, I'm well pleased. Remember now, church, this is the infancy of Jesus' ministry. St stay with me. This is important. This is the infancy of his earthly ministry, right? Come here. He ain't preached not one word of liberation. He ain't gave nothing to that woman at the well yet. The woman caught in adultery, he ain't given her a word yet. He ain't healed the woman with the issue of blood. He had not helped Peter walk on water, and he has yet to call Lazarus out of the grave. This is the very beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry. This is the day before the first day of school, right, of real life. This is the day before the first day of a ministry. Watch this. That's going to end in crucifixion. And before Jesus ever scores an A-plus on his report card, before Jesus goes out and accomplishes any great feats, before he reveals himself to be the incarnation of divinity, his father just needs him to know, Daddy loves you. <laughs> And that's what I want to tell somebody here today before you go to school tomorrow, before you got to go back to deal with peer pressure, before they got to go back to school to deal with teachers, before they go back to school to confront last year's bullies, before they go another week into the school year to deal with challenges, before they take a quiz, before they take one note, before they take one test, child of God, your children need to hear you say that you love them. Because if you tell them that you love them, they might not be afraid to fail. If they know that you love them, they might not be afraid to try. If they know that you love them, then they won't go looking for love in all the wrong places. If they know that you love them, they won't need sex to satisfy the hole in their heart left by a loveless home. If they know that you love them, they won't need validation from a man who wants their body but not their being. If they know that you love them, they won't need a high body count in order 
to feel like a man. If they know that you love them, they won't repeat your mistakes. Y'all sit there quiet if you want to. If they know that you love them, they'll run through the finish line with everything that they've got. If they know that they're loved without condition, without warrant. Come on, I'm talking about unmerited love, unmerited favor. You might see a change in the way that they behave. If they know that you love them, they might avoid that dysfunctional friend group. If they know that you love them, they might try harder this year. If they know that you love them, they might believe in themselves. If they know that you love them, then they'll know that they're worthy. And the Bible says that the sky opened up and the Lord spoke a word of affirmation over his own child. I was going to do an altar call, but I think I think it's better that you lay hands on your own children. I mean, who better to lay hands on your own children and speak life over them? I just dare you extend your hands to where they are and just open up your mouth and just begin to tell them that you love them. Matter of fact, go to where they are. Stop being bougie. Stop acting like that. Come on, go to where they are. Come on, wrap your arms around them. Put your hand on their head. Come on, tell them that you love them. They need to know that you love them. They need to know that you care about them. Y'all ain't moving. They need to know why you work so hard. They need to know why you struggle the way that you do. They need to know yeah, that you believe in them. They need to know that you've got their back. They need to know that they weren't an accident, even if they were unplanned. For I know the plans that I have for you. Yeah, declares the Lord. Plans, yeah, to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Shout yeah. They need to hear you say that you are my son, that you are my daughter, and I love you. You're my child, and I'm happy that God put you in my life. Go to where they are. That's a word of deliverance right there. That word can change your family for the next a thousand years. Come on, tell them you are the head and not the tail. You're going to be a lender and not a borrower. Come on, tell them I believe God for you. I see you in the future and you're looking stronger and wiser and better. Come on, go to them. Lay hands on them. Speak a word over them. Y'all ain't saying nothing. These are your babies. These are your children. Come on, lay hands on them. Just your kids. Come on, speak life over them and testify. God is doing an awesome thing in you. Come on, they need to know that God is their refuge and their strength. A very present help. And in the time time of trouble. They need to know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Y'all don't hear me. They need to know that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the Lord will raise up a standard against them. They need to know that his power to the faith. And to them who have no might, he will increase strength. They need to know that the youth shall get weary, that young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Come on, they need to know that all things work together for the good, the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. They need to know that when life gets rough, that when it gets difficult, that he will keep you in perfect peace. If you can keep your mind stayed on him, they need 
need to know a God who is a healer, a God who is a deliverer, a God who is a bridge over troubled waters. They need to know that he's a way out of nowhere, that he's water when you're thirsty, bread when you're hungry. They need to know that he's a healer, that he's a deliverer, that he's a savior, that he's a lifter of your head, that he's a lover of your soul. They need to know that he's a breach mender, a company keeper, a burden bearer, a heavy load sharer, a hot fixer, a mind regulator, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a door opener, a problem solver, a life giver, a yoke destroyer, a demon buster, a depression defeater. They need to know that one day when I was lost, he died on an old rugged cross. They need to know that they hung him high, stretched him wide. He hung his head, and for them they died. But that's not how the story is. Three days later, he got up with power in his hands. Shout yeah! Come on and shout it, yeah! I need to know. I need to know. Don't assume that I know. I need to hear you say it. I need you to speak life over me. Even in my, th I called my mama this morning. I said, pray for me. I'm nervous. Speak word over me. She gave me lip before, but hey, look, that's my mama. That's what she gonna do. But they need to hear you speak life over them. They need to know the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous is what avails much. Let the church say, Amen. Come on, the doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to extend this invitation to discipleship, an invitation to Christ consciousness, an invitation to know who God is, not just to join a church, but to be a part of God's army, to become a part of God's family, to be a part of what God is up to. I invite you to come. Come on, they already coming, amen? Are they coming? Is that? Come on, give God thanks and praise for them as they come. Come on, she's already come. She's broken the ice. So you don't have to even worry this morning. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be nervous. But come on to God. I got one call. One call is for those who say, I don't have a church home. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not connected to a family of faith. Not, I've never been baptized. I don't know anything about the Lord. And I want to get a relationship with God. If that's you, I want you to come on. Come on down front and join church. If that's you, I want you to get about your seat. I want you to have the courage to move. Come on, as they're coming, I need y'all clap. Come on, church. As they're coming, I need you clapping and giving God praise. They're coming. Come on, as they're coming, I need you to give God thanks and praise. As they're, they're coming from all over the sanctuary. Come on, give God praise as they come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's my second call. They're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. Oh, y'all ought to talk to me here. Y'all ought to give God praise. Y'all ought to give God praise for the babies. Y'all ought to give God praise for young folk coming to give their life. They still coming. They still coming. They still coming. Y'all ain't praying hard enough. Y'all not giving God praise for this harvest of young people that God is depositing in your midst. Come on, come on. Here's my second call. 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 For someone who say, look, I, I, I know the Lord, I, I, I have a church home, but I'm not growing where I'm going. 
Yeah, and I, I want to be a part of a family of faith that does justice and loves mercy and walks humbly with God. If that's you, I want you to meet us here at this altar. I want you to meet us here at this altar. Somebody else might say, look, Pastor, here's the third call. Look, I've been in church all my life, but I've backslid, and I'm the one popping the pills and sipping the lean and, and smoking the drove. And look, I'm ready for God to do a new thing in my life. I want God to do something new, and I want to join this church. Come on, if that's you, I want you to meet us here at this altar. Hold on, y'all. Let's do this. Can we do this? Hold on. Let's try this. Let's try this. Real, real. Jesus is real to me. Come on. Oh, yes. Gives me the victory. Yeah. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. I know he's real. He's real. Jesus is real to me. for this harvest. Come on. Come on. Give God thanks and praise for the harvest. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Gives me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him. So one more time, Jesus. I know he's real. Come on. Jesus is real to me. God praise for this harvest. Lord, we thank you for these that you have brought into our midst, for these, your children, who you sent to this place at this moment. Lord, equip us as the church to give them what they need, to tell them what they need to know, to help them discern what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for how you're going to use them as a testimony of faith of what you're doing here in the earth realm and in and through our church. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray it all. Let the church say amen. We're going to ask that you go with our decision counselors, and they're going to minister to you in a private area. Come on, give God praise this morning. Give God praise. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, come on, come on, keep clapping, keep clapping. That's your new family. Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear. You. I said that's your new family. We thank God for adding to the church on this the Lord's day. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And we give God, amen, thanks and praise. Amen. Thank y'all, praise team, for indulging the old man. Thank you so much. I am so appreciative. So uh, we got to make some announcements. Let the church say offering time. It's offering time in the house of the Lord. Go ahead, get your gifts in your hand as we prepare to bless them before they are given. As you're preparing, though, your tithes and offering, please allow me a uh, point of youth pastor privilege again to share a few announcements with you. Remember that your gifts enable us to do ministry that touches the lives of so many people across the country, across the city, rather across the country and across the globe. And so uh, we thank God that even uh, today you, we gave, we, you saw $105,000, amen, that you, that you gave. That's how y'all feel? Yeah, 
Yeah. $105,000 that we give for students to go back to school with, that is a function of what your gifts help us to do. Last month, during the back to school fair hosted by Faith Formula, your church supported an effort, and Glow, you tell me if this is right, well, we gave away 900 backpacks, where Glow, we gave away 900 backpacks, 900 book bags and supplies. Oh, see, y'all don't know, y'all ain't impressed by nothing. Folk be bragging about 200 and you did four times as much. That's you. That's your gifts. That's your giving, your tithes and your offering. And so thank you so much to Sister Floor Webb, Sister Gloria Shema for their hard work at the 616. So when you give, you help us to do that kind of ministry that has long-term impact. So remember that you can text to give. You can also use the GiveLify app, download it. Uh, download the GiveLify app, search Friendship West, and you can give there. You can again text to give, 972 29419. You can also give online, friendshipwest.org, or you can use the Friendship West app that you can download from your app store. But we ask that you would go ahead and begin right now preparing uh, your gifts. Amen. To give as you are on your way out. The ushers, wave your hands. Ushers, wave your hands so that they can see you. Amen. You see the ushers at the doors. You see the ushers at the doors as you depart. You can, uh, you can deposit your gifts there after we pray over them as we make our way out today. All right. Speaking truth to power, a candid conversation. We're asking that you join Dallas, your, your Dallas County Judiciary at the Truth to Power series where you're going to learn important information about the criminal justice system. You can learn everything that you need to know about it here. Let the church say here at the church. August 20th, that's Saturday, August 20th. Uh, August 20th from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. here at Friendship West uh, Church where there will be free back-to-school supplies that will be, be provided. So we ask that you would make yourselves available for that. Again, continue to pray for our senior pastor, amen, as he is on vacation. Pastor, you're watching us. We love and miss you, and we continue to pray for you and the family. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for our senior pastor. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. I want my Chosen Generation Youth Ministry team to stand. Ministry leaders, come on, stand. Where are my ministry leaders at? Y'all didn't come to church today? Thank you, Sister Chris, Tajay, Malik. Okay, some of them didn't come to church. I'm looking. Am I that? Oh, okay. All right. We'll praise God for those of you who are here. Reverend Michelle, our ministry leader, Sister Tajay Brown, Sister Chris Henderson, Brother Malik, Sister Gail Jones, all those of you, some of them who are not here, our Shanti leader, Sister Ali, Sister Monique, Brother Ben, who leads Diop. Oh, my God. Yesterday, oh, my goodness. Yesterday was so good. Let the church say so good. It was so good. So we got to take a pause to thank Dr. Norfleet, Chadney, Saul Gates, Alexis, Chloe. Come on, come on, Talitha Jack, come on, took pictures, Chris, who ran sound and produced our videos for the month. And of course, our beloved senior pastor whose vision we are running with, a, a vision for a justice-seeking youth ministry. So we not like nobody else. So don't expect us to be like nobody else, because ain't nobody like us. So thank you so much for y'all's effort, for your tireless effort and your work uh, to help this ministry be what it is. I love you. I thank you. We're going to Papa Do's on Thursday. Make sure you're on time. If you didn't RSVP, too late. Amen. Too late. All right. Next Sunday is super special. Next Sunday is super special. Let the church say Superhero Sunday. You heard it before, but we're going to talk about it again. We're asking everyone who has not had the fun of life drained from them to come to church in your favorite superhero costume or T-shirt, amen, as we serve our risen Savior, amen. So Superhero Sunday, Superhero Sunday. Uh, remember, those superheroes are, are future-oriented, and in that spirit, we're expecting great things from God for the future of our church. Let the church say amen. And so continue to pray that God send us, sends us a children's pastor. But next Sunday, after Superhero Sunday, join Pastor Fitzgerald for a word of prayer on the land where God is going to raise up. We believe it. We decree it. We declare it. And it is so that God is going to raise up a youth facility and an entertainment center where the work of the ministry can go forth. So join us right after church on next Sunday. We're going to walk. Uh, as many of you who will go, as many of you who can go, we'll go over to the field for a word of prayer as we speak a word of declaration with great expectation the great things that God indeed has in store for our future because we indeed got next let the church say amen
Again, I'll preach it for next Sunday. I'll preach it for next Sunday. None other than minister to Misha Mills from the Greater Allen Cathedral in Jamaica, Queens, New York. Amen. So you do not want to miss Reverend Mills and what God is going to say through her. I believe that she's going to be a tremendous blessing to the body of Christ. Our children's choir is singing next Sunday. Give God praise for the children's choir. We give God thanks for the children's choir. Uh, and just like we hosted our worship and arts workshop for youth yesterday, we're asking you to have your children join us for children's choir rehearsal on Saturday. Let the church say Saturday, August 20th. Yeah, August 20th. Go ahead, August 20th. 10 a.m., 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary, Dr. Northland, they're going to be in the choir room. All right, in the choir room. They're going to be in the choir room, and then they will minister the very next day. So you do not, you don't want to miss the children. Amen. The Psalm, so I've been saying it all month, Psalm 8 and 2, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, God has indeed ordained strength to make your enemies shut up. Amen. So we got give God thanks and praise for our children's choir that will minister uh, on next Sunday. And be sure that you are in rehearsal on next Saturday. On the fourth Sunday, we're going to be joined by the Honorable Reverend Raphael Wardnock, Ph.D. Amen. <laughs> Senior pastor of the Ebenezer Baptist Church in the city of Atlanta and a United States Senator for the state of Georgia. He will be signing his new book, so please mark your calendars for that as well. Then the day before, but the day before, the day before, I'm asking all of our young people to join us on the Keys campus for Hoops and Hope. Hoops and Hope, uh, Youth Church Revival Edition. I will be well hydrated, so I don't want to hear no basketball or cramp jokes, amen. But just in case, Mother Anderson, get the mustard ready, have it on standby. In case we got to go there again, join us at Keese at 10 a.m. for Hoops and Hope. You can start registering right now. You can register right now. You see that QR code? Go out. Don't do that, Fizz. Go out to the Connection Center. Amen. After church, you can sign up there. You can register using your phone through that QR code, Hoops and Hope. Hey, hey look, uh, Alan Iverson might show up. You never know who might who I might show up as, right? You never know what, what could happen. Fitz, you come out. Come on, come on, Fitz. <laughs> Amen. We give God thanks and praise for Hoops and Hope next Saturday. Oh, no, yeah, Saturday, August 27th. Saturday, August 27th. Not next Saturday. Saturday, August 27th. Stay tuned for our Courageous Conversations live all month long. All month. We got a lot of announcements because the youth ministry does a whole lot of stuff. You just don't know. Yeah. Um, Courageous Conversations live. Last week we hosted an important conversation that I'm I am I am I am I am asking you, begging you, pleading you, go back and watch that conversation. Members of our church, April and Derek Bell, came and had a, they were courageous enough to talk about their daughter Carmen, a member of our church who received a scholarship last year, who disappeared after being groomed by traffickers online. Go back and watch that. We talk about the dangers of the internet. You do not want to miss that. Next Wednesday, we're talking about gangs, guns, and what the church can do. So I think that's going to be a very fruitful conversation. I want you to tune in Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. All right, let's look to the Lord so we can sanctify our gifts, sanctify our gifts, and give them back to the Lord. Lord, we love you and we thank you for these gifts and these gifts that you give to us. Thank you for this church. We thank you, O oh God, for this awesome ministry. We ask that these gifts would bring about the work of the ministry. May it support the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel of justice to all nations. Lord, as we sow today, we trust that you are able to give it back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And so we thank you in advance for the mighty ministry that we will do and the blessings that you will pour out that we won't even have room enough to receive. And the people of God said, amen. All right, it's time to go. All right, going to go get some chicken. Amen. Shout out to our young people one more time. Give God praise for our young people. Oh, I can't hear you. Give God thanks and praise for the young people. Hey, for the young folk. Come on, come on. I know you wish that you were still young, but don't hate. Come on, celebrate. Celebrate them as we get ready to go, as we look to the Lord. Let us go. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Lord, we give you thanks and praise because, Lord, you have been good to us. Lord, we ask as we depart from this place but never from your presence that the Holy Spirit would go before us, that it would make the way straight, preparing the way for the Lord to do something in our life. Lord, as we go with peace, we ask that we can also go with power to discover everything that we need to know in Jesus. Jesus name peace and amen
praise God for this. And for your joining us during it. Check us out on social media. And please like, share, and subscribe at Friendship West. Then go to www.friendshipwest.org to find out more about this marvelous movement. Find out how to participate through sharing your prayers, sharing your offerings or monetary gifts, or sharing and investing your time volunteering with this difference-making ministry. For you who are viewing as visitors, you can share that you are here by taking time to text FWBIZ to the number 28950. For those who want to, this time that you are visiting to be the last time that you are a visitor, you can become part of our fabulous family of faith, either by calling 469-498-0210 or by emailing join us at friendshipwest.org with your first name, your last name, and your cell number. Either way, we look forward to hearing from you. We're so excited that you are here. Until next time, blessings on you. Friendship West Baptist Church.